As a plant fanatic, I've been dreaming of a visit to the Royal Botanical Gardens at Kew for years. And at long last, my day arrived. So I thought I'd bring you along with me. Leaving the London traffic and trains behind, we step through grand gates to a serene oasis of nature. Well, it's always left behind. There are 500 acres of winding lawns and borders, trees and shrubs of all manner of rare and interesting labelled varieties, and world-famous glass houses in between. I found myself in a surprisingly dense patch of classic English woodland and cow parsley, with the treetop walkway towering above. height is not for the faint of heart, and I'm not sure I liked being able to see through the metal grating of the walkway itself, but the views around are a special experience with interesting facts about trees at various points along the route. Nearby is the Temperate House, made up of a selection of glass houses, and is a nice place to begin with plenty to learn. The centre house has a walkway around the roof section where you can get a great view of everything below. Changed. Amongst the expected garden sites are temporary art exhibits designed to encourage a playful interaction with the landscape and they get you thinking. At this time the theme is food and well-being with an emphasis on future sustainability. I hid from the rain in the Shirley Sherwood Gallery of Botanical Art and enjoyed the incredibly detailed watercolour studies of food plants. I meandered a short way into the kitchen garden before squeezing a quick peek at the hive installation. A knitted metal sculpture surrounded by wildflowers that literally leaves you buzzing from the trippy vibrating synth music playing from speakers above. Getting wet, it smells beautiful. The palm house is the most famous of the glass houses and also boasts a grand walkway with decorative spiral staircases to access its heights.
A regular misting keeps the humidity at the required levels and the earthy plant smells are intense. I love that live nature has found its way into the synthetically arranged jungle. Although I'm sure the gardeners would disagree as some plants are clearly showing some signs of pest damage. All around, the line between living landscape and building is blurred. Well, I thought I was just filming for YouTube today. Perhaps we'll get to be on TV again. The nearby water lily house may be small, but is host to the largest lily pads I've ever seen, laying invitingly on the mirrored surface of the black pond. My favourite area had to be the Princess of Wales Conservatory, with its labyrinth of layered glass houses spreading on and on. But the water lily house is a close second. certainly had the weirdest of flowers on show. On this day, anyway. Just to put this in scale. Before leaving, I took a moment beneath the impressive Turner's Oak with its far-reaching supported branches. There's something calming about being in the presence of such an immense old tree. I'll be making a trip shortly to meet the major oak in Sherwood Forest, Nottinghamshire, so subscribe to join me there. So I've been here for about four hours, but there's no way that I've managed to see everything that this place has to offer. It's been fantastic. I'll definitely be coming back another season. I hope you've enjoyed having a look around. For now, I'm booked in at the Vincent van Hoff Experience, which has its last day today. I'm so pleased to be able to catch that. I'd hoped to find time to paint on the day, but instead returned home to create a deeply layered watercolour homage to the most biodiverse place on Earth. I blended a mixture of the spaces with their varying tones and leaf shapes, and bright exotic flowers mixed in. It's difficult to choose what to include, and from memory, but these are the impressions that stayed with me, complete with little spots of blue humidity drifting down. I hope you enjoyed the video, I highly recommend a visit and if you can please donate to this incredible place. 
there's plenty more I didn't film to discover for yourself. Check out my other videos and like and subscribe to join me on more nature and art expeditions in the future. Until then, stay inspired!